Hello everyone, like first of all, thank you so much for your support and don't worry, like the daily edit will still come later but this video is just a tutorial because some of you asked me to do it and, and I know a lot of you have channels and do editing as well so I thought it, it would be interesting to do this I'm sorry for my English and I'll probably brain freeze a lot but this is the video we are going to review and it's the one most of you asked me to do a tutorial about it's the FPS Mates League so let's go First of all, like I'm not a 3D artist, like I just do editing and I found this stock footage of these soldiers coming down and I had the idea because on the looks, look support video I used the FPS gun as well so I thought like what if these guys come down and like start shooting everyone and sniping people and, and like these soldiers finding this stock footage was the whole set the whole video in motion like this was the original I, I got the idea for the video from finding this so most of the times and because you this is a game this is League of Legends and you can record like however you want like the, the problem with using stock footage in the real world in the real world is that not always you can match you can record like matching the stock footage you have but with the camera tool like you, you can do that so any, any stock footage you find you can apply it on these videos because you can record whatever you want like with free with full freedom so so that's where that's where the whole idea started like from these soldiers and for, first yeah first let's review the video and then I'll go into specific effects once again like this is this is all like just green screen like all I take out is a green screen and I shoot in the same angle as the stock footage I have and this is the result again green screen for the guns and pretty normal here again just green screen Uh, yeah, this, this, this part here, this part here was the the hardest one by far because once again, this bullet, yeah, this bullet is uh, stock footage as well. Uh, uh, like I said, I don't do 3D work, all I do is editing. So the, the video itself, the, the video I have, let me show you really quick see the this is the stock footage I used and as you can see the camera is already rotating so the hardest part was recording this movement matching the camera movement with the movement of the bullet and yeah this took a lot of time <laughs> this really took a lot of time so and, and and there's no tutorial for this. It's just trial, trial and error, basically. So, yep. Good luck going for this effect. It's so, so, so time-consuming. But in the end, it worked out pretty well. Uh, uh, but we'll go back. We'll go back into it later. Don't worry. And yeah, the FPS stuff. Like this is very. St this is all done in the camera tool like you just attach the camera to a specific champion and you you record that that's it everything else comes in after effects like with the getting hit like gets you red and things like that and here this part when you die like when when someone dies i pause i pause the game on that specific time I unlock the camera and I just unpause the game and come back to make the effect like uh, Overwatch. Again, this is very simple. Like I do videos every day, so I don't have time to like really replicate the Overwatch overlay. So this is just a black solid with transparency. The 
the font is big, big fat noodle, something like that. When we go to After Effects, uh, check, and like you just try to replicate overall, and just move on. Okay, th this part was so annoying. Like again, the effect, the, the effect is very easy. You just take away the green screen, and you have the knife. Getting the camera movement was the hardest part. Like moving the camera to reach the target exactly when she's dying. This took a lot, a lot, a lot of trial and error until like the distance, like until the distance makes right. Like she's not dying from a knife attack. Like one meter away or like past her so yeah th this again this is a lot of trial and error but effect wise is very simple to do this is another example of like matching mat matching the video to the footage you have I, I had this footage of this atomic bomb like from a different ang from a lot of different angles and that's what I did like, you, you just try to replicate the same angle as the footage you have and bam. From an editing point of view, this is very simple to do. Like you just record on the same angle and you just take the green screen. Moving on. Yeah, again, you attach the, uh, you attach the camera to the champion. And that the... In, in this scene, like these guns part were the hardest because there's a lot of guns and you need to do some adjustments to them. It's not just put, it's not just take the green screen and it's ready to roll. You need to make some adjustments, but we'll talk about that later. This is the same type. I don't, yeah, this one. This one is probably one of my favorite effects because like, I always imagine like what is what is to be like inside Bard's magical journey. So I wanted to do like obviously it has to be some trippy concept, but I didn't want to be too trippy that would make like a uh, epileptic attack. So I went for this and <laughs> I think it worked pretty well. It it's funny and it's funny and trippy, but not too trippy that you just throw up. Uh, and that's about it. So now let's move on to After Effects and remake all of this crazy stuff. Now we're inside After Effects and the first thing you notice is that this is a mess. And the reason why is that I don't rename anything because I do videos every day and I won't come back. <laughs> I won't come back to these projects. Like I delete all the footage after, after I'm done. After I'm done with the video, like I delete everything. So I don't usually waste time renaming everything, but I I advise you to do it. Like especially if you're starting. If you don't rename every layer to know exactly what it is, like this will take you so much time. Uh, and as will take my time now, because coming back to this will be a crazy confusing, but let's go. The first thing, okay, like I said, the soldiers are green screen. Green screen footage, where is it? Right here. You see, the effect is here. Pretty simple. You you take key light, layer, effects, keying, key light. You press this thing here, and it's gone. Just like this. You need to do some tuning. Usually, I usually mess up with these settings and come here. You clip the white a bit. Shrink. I usually go with minus one or minus two. And depending on the footage, also a uh, screen blur. But. And this is it. But so. I had this stock footage. You take, you take the green screen off, and you're left with uh, this. Oops. Oh, I have to. Wow, so smart. So, and you're left with this. Like, I recorded this big overview of Summoner's Rift, but it still wasn't to me. It wasn't looking like very impressive. Like. 
because you don't have the sense of speed or much movement at all. Like it, it feels like they are falling very slowly. So what I did was like create these clouds passing by them. So you kind of feel and and it and it also makes like a, a good unveil of the summoner's rift, but because it's not clear right away. Like it starts like all white and you can see as they come down, like you can see more and more. So I thought it was a much more interesting shot than just the soldiers by themselves. And how you do this is pretty simple. You create a new solid layer, new, oops, sorry, new solid, doesn't matter the color it is. You go to effects, simulation, particle world. And this, this effect, I use it a lot, and it has a lot of different, uh, a lot of different purposes. Like you can do a lot of different stuff with this. And what I'm doing, and what I'm using this today, is for, is to create clouds, like to create a cloud movement. So you go to particle, faded sphere, and you make like the burst, like crazy big. You. The burst, no, like the size. You make the size super big, the biggest, the biggest you can like, big, 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 big. Producer, you turn up the radius on which the because how can I explain? Like this is like a box. This means that the uh, let's come here. View active camera, like custom view. See, this is the particle world. Like it's creating particles in this space, and as you grow this, the radius, like it, it will start creating particles more to this side, to this side, like everywhere in the world, not just like a small square on the center. So this is like the basic for it. The position is where the producer is coming from and for what we are doing today like this doesn't matter a lot but like when you want to do like some special effect like magic and things like that like you want the producer like in a line but let's not go with that but let's turn off the other clouds so you can actually do so you can actually see what we're doing uh, and the burst color of course set to white white and it's still not big enough ah burst rate you need a lot more a um, lot more clouds and like big big and what i did in the original i did camera sorry is like i even scale this i scale this to be even much bigger because even on the maximum size you could still you can still see like, oh, there's a ball here, there's a ball here. So I scale this way up. And let's run it. So I can see like, there's a lot of clouds. And maybe too many clouds. So you just turn the burst rate a little bit down. And... You, you need to mess up with the uh, physics because all of them are coming from one side and mess up with this as well and and this is kind of the effect I did I think I did a yes yeah, screen you need to change the transfer mode to blend better and in the original I did two layers of clouds so you can still see Above everything, like you can still see the soldiers. Like if you only have one layer on top of everything, like the soldiers will disappear. So you, with two cloud, with two layers, one on top, you, you can control. You can control how much of the soldiers at the, at the time you are seeing. And then let's turn off this. So now that I explain that part, uh, this. This is the exact same effect from a different perspective. The clouds just moving on. And yeah, again, this this is just green screen. You just take the green screen 
and shoot from the same angle like there's no effect here and he arrives the gun the gun itself the same stuff just green screen oh and, and this this is the tricky part tricky part that's not tricky at all uh, this this green screen effect has has holes on the on the green screen like it, it gets black so what you have to do is create a mask to delete this part you want to delete only this part so what you do is let's delete this mask you create a mask by coming here pen tool and you create a shape around this object but by default it sets to add so you have to come here and set to subtract done and then when you take out the green screen it's gone but in, in this in this example like the camera the the camera in this example the gun will be in front of the gun will be in front of the um, the object comes from here so you are cutting the gun and you need to what you need to do is animate the position of the mask so you come here on the mask you if you don't have this showing you press m and open up the mask thing and mask path is what you want to animate you click on the stopwatch and it gives you a keyframe and this is 99 percent of working with after effects everything is done with keyframes like at this point what this tells you is that at this point in time this mask will be here so if you move uh, if you move back and now you change the position of the mask it creates a new keyframe so at this point in time the mask is here so during these two points during this time between these two points the mask will animate see the mask is moving between these two points and the closer it is the faster it travels so, so th this is the this is the foundation of after effects keyframes are everything so when the gun appears you want that thing to be outside when the gun goes into place and it's ready to shoot the mask goes to the place where it should be and now you don't see bullet holes yeah the original doesn't see <coughs> these are muzzle flares like again it's all about just it's it's a almost everything you do is green screen like you, you take the green you take the green out and you move the elements that's that's compositing <laughs> like composing a scene editing that that's that's what you do you take green screen and you mix a bunch of different elements into one shot so you take the muzzle flares you line them with the gun and boom 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 so this scene this scene is done the basics of it and so let's go i used this effect before like i said on that looks video i have the same the same idea like the sniper coming in and s scope scoping and snipe someone power but and, and I, w I was using that L let's see this is the one I used in the looks video but like while editing like the quality like didn't really match the rest of the guns I was using so I had to waste more time looking for another sniper and I find this one like high quality very pretty that's it when you find these guns on the internet like it's not just take the green screen and it's done you need to do some editings for them to be usable because like on the video they will shoot randomly and things like that so you need to like stabilize the gun and have it only moving and firing like when you want so you need to go throughout the video and like identify all these points on like when the gun is is still when the gun is going for the scope 
when the gun is coming from the scope, when the gun is reloading, like you need to cut all these in individual movements. And once and once you reconstruct the action of the gun, like you are ready to see. Like this is the just a freeze frame of the gun still. Then it's going for the scope in. It changes to a, a photo, a stock photo. And this is a freeze frame. And, and the reason why I did this is because I can use this clip for everything now without editing. Because this is a freeze frame. You can stretch this as much as you want. Like it, it's always in this position. Like doesn't matter. So you can stretch this as much as you want. And then like there's the animation of scoping in. And when you scope in, it goes to this image. This this image doesn't fire right away. Like it has a bunch of seconds. So I can cut. I can stretch or cut if I want to just a quick scope and bang. Or if I want like to really steady the aim and like boom. So th this all this will help like later when like like cutting cutting the editing the gun like this will make it like so much easier later a and you'll see why so and the gun fires and the gun comes back the gun reloads chuck chuck and the video stops here because it, it goes back to the the original position what you have now is a clean stock footage of firing the sniper because in 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 just the video i had like the guy was just firing randomly and like not waiting or not reloading things like that so th this this clip you can reuse as much as you want and all, all the animations will be like as you expect them to be for example here all i do is like you have the template footage you put the sniper on top and that's it so it goes in when when it goes in the scope i make a a zoom a 200% zoom on the footage and when it's ready to shoot bam it shoots and comes back and then the video starts again like this video ends and starts the new video Again, the animation, and here, in scope mode, you can add more time or subtract more time. Here, I, I divided the clip because I needed to re reposition the shot. And again, like, so, so basic. Instead of, like, going through crazy editing to match the each individual shot, like, you just do this and you have this effect you can reuse this as much as you want like and it's super easy to do and you can see i reuse this a lot this gun is the, is the most used in the video because i went through all the trouble of making this clean uh as for this effect i have no idea why i used it like i just thought this ship was crazy cool but it doesn't make any sense. So let's skip this part. Uh, here. 90% uh, of this is done in camera tool, so we'll, we'll go into that later. What I did here was just uh, like the border of the screen getting red when you get hit. And you do that by like uh, layer, new solid make it red or the color you want i don't know and here the mask ellipse tool and double click press subtract and open the options feather and uh, increase the expansion a bit and like so this is the when you're getting hit. Now you have to animate like turning on and off. So you press T 
T, like turtle, T. Press the stopwatch. And now you, as you can see, I already did here. When, when S is auto attacking, like the screen turns red and red and red and more red until it's dead. So you have to go, like when, when you get hit, like you put like 100 or 90%, depending on how drastic you want the effect. And then you animate it like to lower Maybe, probably, you have to start from zero. It comes from zero percent, you get hit. One hundred percent, and then like lowers, and then you get you you stay without being hit for a few seconds, and then you get hit again, and it goes up to one hundred. Like this is this is the way you do it. Go up and down. Go up and down. That's that's how I did it. And then here is just a tint. Like it's, it's not completely black and white, but like the color fades away. And where is it? Is it here? Yeah, tint effect. So you come to effects, color correction, tint. And by default, it sets to 100%. So it's the easiest way to make a black and white black and white footage and what I did was just 50% to retain some of the color and animate it from 0 to 50 to to come in as you are eliminated the like I said oh the the font the font is called yeah big noodle Big noodle titling. So you just try to replicate as much as you can. Oh, this. With, I, with what I explained before, like you should already be able to do this. This is a black solid. You make a new, new solid, make it black. And then you come here to the mask tool, rectangle tool, and just make something like that to subtract and the uh, opacity like 50% or less what did I use here oh this is the fade to black uh, 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 opacity 75 the original I used was 75 but you can mess around and see so yeah creating text probably I should cover how to do that as well you have the text tool here you you pressed and yo what's up and big big fat noodle that's it and you just try to match it as close as you can here you select the color white oh I have some effects going on right 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 and what I did here it looks like a, a glow yeah definitely a glow and what else just a glow drop shadow no let me check yeah just I just added a glow all right so you go to Effects, stylize glow. You you mesh, you mess up with the threshold, so it's not like doesn't destroy the colors, but it still makes a glow. And you can pump the radius. When, and when you play around with the radius, like you can really see what's going on. It's just making a bit poppy. Uh, uh, moving on. This is very similar to the Ezreal triple kill, but the big difference is like it has new guns now, and you have to go through this process of like isolating every movement of the gun, and these guns, where is it? And these guns had the bullet hole as well, 
So you need to make sure like you do the ready. You mask out the bullet holes or they will be on the footage. The first time I rendered, like I forgot to take this and when I was like re rechecking before uploading to YouTube, I found this like wow. How did I how did I spend hours editing this and miss that thing? Anyway. You you take the bullet holes and and yeah, it takes a lot of time. So you you take the bullet holes and that's about it. Switching the guns is very simple. Like you just hit P, like Pantheon and Lulu. What's another champion that starts with P? Dang, you kidding. Uh, League Champions P. Poppy. Pantheon or Poppy. Dang. So, yeah, you press P on the keyboard. And it brings you the position. And once again, you click on the stopwatch. The stopwatch for the position. And as you move a bit in time, and you make the gun go back, go down, not back. The gun goes down, and the other one comes up. Zook. So th this part is super simple. It's just two keyframes happening. Like zook. You, you can see, you can see the the screen here. These points. the the video coming up to the screen uh, and that's about it moving on yeah Bart Bart was crazy fun to do like it's very very simple effect but to me to me it it's so funny like being inside of the magical journey so and this is just a white solid so if uh, new <laughs> Layer, layer new, solid, make it white. And you come here to the mask tool, ellipse, go to the center and make, uh, you press control shift to make a perfect circle. And like make, it, make it around this size and you move the mask to the position it happens like let me turn off the other one. So he opens the portal here. So you move the mask like to be around the center. And then you animate the expansion. You press the stopwatch. Move a bit in time. And like, okay. Not so much. And like, grow. Obviously, feather. Feather it a lot and make it grow and feather and grow and feather. You, you get the idea. So when it opens, you want it to, as it opens the portal, zoom in a bit. So he, the game animation happens first and now the After Effects sticks over. So like this, zoom, see? The game animation happens first, After Effects takes over, and now as he gets close, as he gets closer to it, it, it takes the whole screen, and like, boom, like this. When, when he's walking, here. When he's walking, it starts to, Grow, stay there, and so uh, much faster. Ah, you get the idea. Zoom, and uh, opacity T, Tristana, opacity animated to zero, and 
there you have it. Oh, this this part. If you pay attention, like you, you can see here in the center, you can see the point of view of part. So what I did was make a a mask. Where is it? Yep. Some point, yeah. I, I made a, a mask and subtracted it and I chose the you have you have a lot of transfer modes and I chose darken to allow only a bit of what's going on below which is this so you can it, it, it's still a trippy world but you can see like it's coming to an end especially in this part when when you start seeing the end of the magic journey like it, to me it makes a better transition instead of just plain plain like trippy video and then out of nowhere like zoop, disappear like you you feel you feel much more movement this way especially as it comes to an end and you see the end of the portal and zoops and transforms to the normal world and the second part is, is the exact same effect but it just lasts longer the same trippy and you can see like the movement coming in and like reaching as it reaches the end there it starts fading away boom and now almost finishing moving on to the camera tool all right so to explain the camera tool, let me open um, a gameplay. Let me open a game really quick. So yep. So this is what's going on. So and you you download this program. It's called Creator Suite from Skin Spotlight. You just open. All right. So this is. This is the program. So once everything is green, like it's good to go. So what you do now is camera, FPS, and game objects, bind, bind camera to champion. So the first thing you have to do is client hook inject DL uh, set skybox I like to come here this helps a bit so every bit helps smart shadows also helps not creating like weird lines on the on the map so you do this now you move into position Ugh. I have the microphone And uh, uh, you 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 disable this here. And bind camera to champion done. And you just press play. And now it will follow all his movements. Right now he's camping the bush. Oh, he's recalling. And that's the thing. That's a a very good point. This way only works in one direction. So if they are walking forward and start walking back, the the camera what I mean is like the camera doesn't stay on the head. The camera stays where you put the camera. And if you put the camera right inside the head, you will see like the face inverted. So you need to put the camera a bit a bit on front of his face uh, so when when he turns like it completely messes up everything so you need to go again see what I, what I was talking about you see the inside of his face you put need to put the camera in front of the face and then bind the camera to the champion and that's it and now it will follow on the direction he's going so a, a good thing to keep in mind 
Uh, and that's about it. Oh, the the dead part. So when when he's about to die, like you press P, you unbind the camera, and then you at the like perfect timing, you start to you press you you unpause the game and you press five to make the camera go back, like at the best time possible. And done. And that's it. It's not very hard work, like a lot of steps to replicate, but it's definitely things that take. It's not hard to do, but it takes time to get everything like right on the perfect timings and things like that. So definitely. So I hope you learned something today. Hope you liked the video. If you want more tutorials, like just ask with other things you'd like me to explain or talk about. And you know what I'm going to say. And it's been a long time since I said it. So thank you for watching and good luck on the fields of justice. Yay.